So we're now going to talk about the inspector. You'll notice that unlike a lot of other touch operators, the thing that's passed between these is uh, is not something that you can like inspect in a meaningful way. So they don't have viewers. Um, if you were to stick a, a null in between them, you get this kind of table of data that is, isn't really useful for understanding what's going on there unless you're kind of developing it. So there's a tool that you can use called the inspector. Um, so we're going to go on select this box frame here. So you'll notice that um, most of these ops have this inspect parameter at the end. So if we click that, it pops open the inspector window. So this will show you what the contents of that operator look like. And it will use a different kind of renderer depending on what, what type of operator it is. Um, so that you can get a, a view into what's going on in there. So this has a camera setting that you can kind of play around with. So you can look at the different settings there. It's got some options for the, the rendering that it uses. So if you wanted to you know, switch on anti-aliasing or something, or um, switch on different kinds of outputs, uh, you can do that. Um, it's got camera and then light settings in there. Um, and if you do this on a uh, an operator, like an output operator, like a Ray March one, um, it will use the kind of the renderer and um, camera settings of that operator itself. But if you're doing something that isn't a renderer, then it will use its own internal one. There's also this you know ROP tab here, which will give you the kind of parameters of that operator itself. So you can play around with those and um, see what it looks like, and just to show you how that's interacting in the scene itself. Um, you can see that as you as you mess around with those settings, um, it's affecting you know the, the actual operator itself. So you can see like what just that one step in the chain looks like. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, gonna close this and then we can try it on a different one. So here we just want to see what these two shapes combined together it looks like. So that's going to give you this view of um, those two combined together. So once you have, uh, once you're inspecting an operator that has inputs, um, this menu will be available and it will show that operator itself. So we're looking at the combined one um, and as well as the different inputs into it. So if you wanted to look at the properties of that sphere, you could change that. Um, or you know, look at the box frame, you can change the settings there. Another important thing to note here is the sidebar here that shows the different output buffers. So the important thing to note here is the side panel, which is, shows the list of output buffers. So you, as we were, like we were using earlier, the uh, normals. So if you switch that here, you can see that it will show you the, the values of the normals on the shape there, which will give you kind of a sense of where where all of those are, are facing. Um, and you can look at depth. So as we noted earlier, depth is kind of those values are at a range that's not that useful. So there's this option down here to change how those channels are rescaled. Um, so here, if we change that to like per channel, um, it will, uh, scale those down from like, you know, 100 to, to zero down to like a zero to one range. Um, switch that back off and we can go to normals. There are also some other um, outputs that we can play around with. So if you wanted to look at, say, like the world space position, um, so we can enable that output here in the, in the renderer settings. And then you'll notice that that shows up as an option in the sidebar. So if we switch over to that, um, so what we have here is each pixel is showing the, the X, Y, Z coordinates of the surface at that point, um, which can be really useful for, uh, for kind of debugging things, um, 